Hi, everybody. This is Matt from Algae Research and Supply. Um, today, we are going to be going over how to use our Brainy Briny uh, kits. Um, this is a uh, algae culturing and brine trip culturing kit to uh, grow Artemia salina, which is brine shrimp. Um, and you can do that uh, in your classroom, in your home, and watch the cysts grow and um, uh, cause some trouble for your, for your algae because they graze on it. So let's go over a couple, or what we're going to go over in the class today. Uh, first, we're going to do a little brief introduction. Then we're going to go on the background uh, about uh, algae, uh, artemia, which is the brine shrimp, or brainy brinies as we're calling them. And then about trophic interchange. Uh, um, finally, we're going to set up the project. Um, we're going to show you how to use the SESHI stick to measure down some algae, um, and then measure and count the brine shrimp. Uh, and then we'll go over how to do some experiments with it, as well as um, also getting into showing you what we can do with some of the larger kits, which is what we have the fish tank out for. And, uh, and then any questions if we have any at that point. Okay, first introductions. My name is Matt Huber. I'm with Algae Research and Supply. We're down in Carlsbad, California, and we've been growing, uh, I've been growing microalgae for Goodness, it's uh, now over 20 years that I've been doing this, uh, and I have the wrinkles and no hair to show for it. Um, so uh, what we do here is we grow microalgae and we sell it to schools and universities around the planet to help increase the awareness of uh, photosynthesis because half of our planet's oxygen comes from microalgae. Okay, so uh, a little bit about the background about what we're gonna be talking about today. Algae, microalgae are primary producers. Uh, these little characters right here are just like your terrestrial plants in that they consume carbon dioxide, use light to make new sugars, new biomass, and they release uh, oxygen, which is what animals use. So um, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we like to do when we're talking about making a little system inside of a bottle is we think about plants and animals being part of uh, this, the continuum of oxygen going through a system. So uh, as plants produce oxygen, animals consume it. As animals get rid of carbon dioxide and nitrogenous wastes, plants like that. And then plants in turn fix that CO2 and that nitrogen back into new biomass, which can then feed the animal. So what we've done is we've created a little kit which you can uh, make that system happen inside of a small tissue culture flask, and this is our brainy briny kit. So, um, what is Artemia? Artemia are brine shrimp. They are, go here, these are the, the six kingdoms of life. Uh, we have the protists. Uh, well, let's start over here. We, we all know our animals. That's because you and I are all animals. You filthy animal. Uh, that was from Home Alone. Uh, for those of you who aren't old yet. Um, animals, we have plants. You guys all know plants. These are terrestrial organisms mainly. Uh, they grow and consume CO2 and produce oxygen. Fungi are the decomposers. Um, and we all know bacteria, um, which uh, get us sick. We have to take antibiotics from it. And then we have archaebacteria, which are the old school bacteria. These are the ones that um, live in very unique environments and maybe the progenote uh, for all our life on earth. And finally that leaves our protist friends here. This is where uh, most algae uh, species reside. Um, uh, and as a matter of fact, this is where, um, uh, no, I, I believe that our animalia uh, are, are, are the, pro, the, uh, uh, the zooplankton we're gonna be dealing with. But algae are protists and the zooplankton are arthropods uh, that we're going to be dealing with today, the, uh, um, the artemia. So what are the artemia? What do they look like here? I believe that they are very, very cute. Here's some uh, pictures of them. We're going to start off with them as little cysts, which are these little, these little uh, 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 egg-like sacs here. Um, once they hatch, they form larvae, which you see there. Believe it or not, these have one eyeball, and that one eyeball is called the nauplius of eye, and these are called nauplius larvae. The larvae will grow, and they become either male or female, um, so we have sexual dimorphism there. And finally, they will um, couple onto each other and reproduce. The female will form an egg sac or a brood sac, 
and then ultimately she will release the uh, the cysts or eggs into the uh, uh, environment, and they will either be held uh, uh, for the next time that the uh, organism uh, has favorable conditions, or they'll hatch right away. So these are uh, the brine shrimp, the Artemia salina that we're going to be growing. So that's a little bit of the background on those guys. So what we're going to be doing is trophic level exchange. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking to create with this is um, we're going to first grow some algae here because algae are the food for the Artemia. So we're going to grow a, cal a, a batch culture of algae. We're going to be able to track the algae increasing in biomass. And then finally, what we're going to do is introduce cysts around day 10 and those cysts will hatch and consume and begin to graze on the algae. The algae biomass will come back down and the brine shrimp biomass will come back up. And then after this, if you were to go for longer than 30 days uh, and your container is big enough, which again, the 10 gallon aquarium helps out with, um, you can see the uh, up and down cycles of the brine shrimp and the algae. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get to how the kit works, shall we? Oh. Um, Okay, setting up the project. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our um, our container here. Can we get a little bit of water? Just uh, 200 mils of that. So um, this is your tissue culture flask. You'll notice that it has a nice little grid on the front of it there. Um, that grid is used to help us to quantify the uh, brine shrimp uh, as they grow. It's one millimeter grid. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take these uh, tissue culture, uh, these are culture salts. Um, this is just salt water. So we're going to add, this is measured out so that we can turn this into seawater. So you have to make sound effects when you put stuff in. Is an appropriate salt adding sound. You have this going here. This is a uh, 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 I believe this is probably tap water, but we should, for the demo sake, but you should be using um, filtered water or bottled water is the best. Bottled water makes it really easy to use for this sort of stuff. We're going to fill this in until we get to around 175 milliliters, which should be right to that first shoulder there. There are graduations on this side of the container. Um, you can take this now, and it should dissolve pretty quick. Uh, we have our, our, our salts milled down so that they dissolve pretty quickly. We don't want to have a lot of large chunks in there because it just takes a long time to dissolve it. Um, we understand that patience is not always there for young children, at least mine. Sorry, kids. Um, so it likes to have it have be done really fast. Okay, so this is now done. Um, this is a culture of nanochloropsis. Get you in there with that. There's the nanochloropsis. Uh, these are very small, uh, single-celled protists that um, are photosynthetic. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add this entire tube of culture. This is now an inoculum. We're going to add this right to the culture here. And uh, this is the beginning of when uh, you're starting your, your batch culture. This is how you're going to grow the algae. Now, there are nutrients that we supply. We, we, we spike this with uh, NPK, nutrient media, uh, before it gets released. NPK stands for nitrogen, uh, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, um, which is our, uh, our F over 2 media, um, before we ship it out. That way, you know, there's one less bottle you guys have to worry about. So from here, what's, uh, what you want to do is set this into a bright uh, place. So um, uh, window sills, some people have success with windows. I'm not a fan of the windows because this gets too hot and you can actually kill the algae and the brine shrimp if it gets over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm a big fan of one of these. Ah. Okay. These have a uh, quantum entanglement theory that apparently happens in our lab. Um, the two cords got wrapped around each other, either that or they were having some romantic moments off camera. Um, these are just LED lights. And so what you want to do is just set one of these up. And depending on how hot and bright it is, you can have it be somewhere in this range uh, to the light itself. So uh, 
that's how you can get these guys to get growing. Now they're they're growing. You set it up and you're thinking to yourself, my this is nice. But what do I do now? So here's what you can do. Um, set me back off camera first of all. We should make some crafting sounds. Um, can you grab one of those pieces of graph paper from that folder there? Thank you. So um, you want to start to count things because what what is it with science if you can't count things to observe? You want to be able to draw stuff out. So in each one of our kits, we have what's called a seshi stick. These seshi sticks are uh, it's a it's a it's a millimeter ruler, just like this, and the ruler itself um, has a target at the very bottom. So target. That target is a way for us to measure optical density. There's a little dotted line right there. You're going to fold that down so that it's at a right angle, like this, to the the ruler. And now you're going to use what's called the Beer Lambert law, uh, and this has to do with uh, optical density. So um, we're going to assume that what is going to be absorbing light inside here is the algae. Um, and that the, uh, the beer Lambert law states that uh, the optical density of a, uh, a solution is directly proportional to uh, the amount of dissolved or suspended solid, or dissolved or suspended material within that solution. So we're going to see, we're going to estimate the optical density by using our eyeball, which is going to be our, our, our piece of uh, analytical equipment, and we're going to sit this uh, um, actually stick straight down into the water until the target disappears. And for me right now, it's right there. So can you see that? So that's the depth. It's just above the bottom. And if I'm going to read this, so you want to read it by looking at where the water line crosses the millimeter grid, or the millimeter uh, ruler. And right now that's at 75 millimeters. So what we're going to do is you can grab your piece of graph paper. And on one side, you want to have time. Um, can you grab a sharpie right there, Daniel? I think this is the one that I believe my children use this as a uh, hammer. So I'm just going to draw a line down here. But this is going to be time. And this will be she does that. Or SDD. Something just like that. Now, if you're work, if you're living right, you're, you're gonna have water stains all over all of your papers because this is the wet lab. So right now we have this at 75. So we'll put a point up here. At 75 and then down here we'll drop it to time zero so over time what you're going to see is uh, every if you if you leave this in a bright spot just like right in front of our light here um, you'll find that um, during the course of a day you're actually going to see one to three millimeters per like every four or five hours of change and that's that's when it's deep like this uh, when the session this stuff is very deep you'll see rapid change it's going to look the curve over over the course of about a week is going to look something like this. Maybe not quite that traumatic, um, but it's going to look something very similar to this. And with that, you um, can track how much biomass is present. So you might want to observe that as something like that because you want to invert the uh, the numbers. Now online, um, we have our. Uh, and I'm going to grab this real quick. Online, we have the. Uh, Always good to have dead time, yes. Yeah? On our website, we have this stuff here, which shows the session this step as a ratio to the um, uh, cell count and to the dry weight of the of the organism. So I had this just posted up in the lab that they just put down. So we have those things um, online so you can see this and you can make your own, uh, um, you can translate that session this step, which is not a density measurement, you can translate that into an actual uh, cell count or mass of algae per volume. Because that's a little bit more, and it's not something that's really easily done by middle school kids. That's a great high school project um, or even grad school project. I did mine first in grad school. I did this for, this in first. So 
after you get to a session this depth of around uh, uh, 30 millimeters, so that it's about that deep, then you might want to add your brand trip cyst. Now the brand trip cyst, they look like little pieces, little flex of uh, 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 cyst right here, little, little flex of, of pepper inside of the container. So I'm just gonna go ahead uh, and, and add these right to here. And they're in a vehicle of a uh, um, vehicle, the white powder in there, it's just baking soda, um, sodium uh, bicarbonate. The reason we do that is the sodium bicarbonate adds a bit of um, uh, uh, CO2. It's basically solid CO2. And in water, it helps to um, keep everything, uh, uh, it acts as a buffer for pH. So this keeps the pH inside here pretty stable. So these guys are going to hatch pretty quick. Um, they usually will, and let me let me say something really important here. They'll hatch quickly. They should hatch within 24 hours if your temperature is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You really got to keep it around 80 to 85 is the, just the best, most happy temperature for these guys. They will hatch overnight. They'll, the cysts will look like this first. They'll look round, and then they'll start to pinch off. They'll look like little little figure eights or little like two balls connected to each other. And then you'll see the nauplius larva coming out and they'll just kind of swim around and they'll graze on the algae. The nauplius larva have very small mouth parts, which is why the nanopharopsis is such a great uh, selection for them because it's very small as well. And the adults all the way through the babies can eat all of it. So um, once your brine shrimp hatch, they're gonna look a little bit something like these guys here. Um, you can see the brine shrimp in that image. Uh, they're pretty big. They can get to be about two centimeters or 20 millimeters, uh, the adults can. So, and then they've got, sometimes it's kind of gross, but their poop hangs off of them. So they can actually have a, a be maybe uh, three to five centimeters long. You want to, if you're, when you go to count them, which is why we have the grid, um, you don't want to count the poop. You don't want to measure the poop if you can. So the best way to do that is to take the, the, the uh, uh, tissue culture flask and the white piece of paper, set that onto your bench top, set your, your brine shrimp down, and then uh, wait till you get them, uh, till you at least have one on the screen here, that's not the photograph of it. And then there's many different apps you can use on your phones to measure length of things. And you wanna take the length, the individual lengths of each individual in the population and add them all together on another plot. So on day, uh, you want to introduce the cysts. It's usually going to be about 10 days. But on day 10, you're, you might not be able to measure anything. But after maybe three to five days, you'll start to see the organisms are big enough to actually photograph and count with your phone. Add up all those individuals together, and that's going to give you your total biomass estimate of your brine shrimp. Now, with that, that biomass estimate, that should give you um, uh, 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 a an estimate of the animal biomass that you can then compare to the, the plant biomass. And with your sessue disc information and your the, the length measurements from your, from your brine shrimp, you can make these kind of graphs right here where you're watching the algae grow and then you're watching the brine shrimp grow. And this is very much the case where we are cycling uh, matter and energy in an ecosystem, which is one of the NGSS standards. Uh, for middle school and all the way through high school is to do those modeling of the ecosystem for the cycle matter and energy to the ecosystem. Um, which is this thing here. So the, the, the brine shrimp, the brine shrimp eat the algae. The algae are eaten by the brine shrimp. And then when the algae and the brine shrimp all die, they decompose and the bacteria and fungus then go ahead and feed the nutrients in the, um, uh, the return all that biological material in the nutrients and that feeds the algae. So this cycle goes over and over and over again all the time. So um, this is an NGSS standard. So these guys, you can actually, in our lab, the longest we've kept cultures um, is about two and a half years where we have live brine shrimp cultures going. Um, uh, so this can go on for quite a big time, but you do need to have it inside of a large tank to do that. These smaller tanks, like a, a tanks, these smaller ecosystems, like in this tissue culture class, they're great for maybe a month, maybe to, to six months, um, if the conditions are really good. But if you want to have a large, stable population of the uh, brine shrimp, 
and algae, you need to do it in a larger tank. That way there's just a larger pool of genetic material and of food for the brine shrimp to do their cycle to boom and bust. Um, that is just about it. What else we got there? Experiments. Oh, good gravy. There's lots of experiments you can do. Um, if you do have the bigger tank of, of brine shrimp, it's a really neat thing to do. You can pull the brine shrimp out and um, do all manner of different experiments with them. You can do oxygen production for oxygen consumption. Um, you can do all sorts of toxicology experiments with them. Um, we can do, uh, uh, let's see, what other stuff do we have on there? Uh, growth rates experiments. We can find out if temperature affects how fast it grows. Um, all these experiments are described online. If you go to the education section of our website, um, there's we have all these brainy briny uh, experiment uh, primers, um, and they're in, they're they're detailed enough for you to be dangerous, but we leave out a lot of the uh, some of the stuff that teachers it just doesn't make any sense for us to do it. If you're going to change how you do it anyway when you get to the classroom. Um, but there's enough there for you to get started and for you to get some instruction with kids. Um, so let's see. And then lastly, uh, we have all sorts of kits for this. So we have these Brady Brady kits, which I think are about 25 bucks, 20, 25, 30 bucks, maybe a little bit less. Um, uh, those are online. You can get them on Amazon, I think, as well. But go to our website first, because that's where uh, we don't spend a lot of money on Amazon. Um, and then we also have bigger kits that you could do for the classroom. Um, we call these the whole classroom kits, and that's where you can use a big fish tank like this um, with, a, with five gallons of water, which is about halfway filled, and then you can change the volume as needed to do whatever you need. So if you're going to do this inside of your classroom, uh, say you've got several classrooms you're going to do, and you're the lab technician, uh, or you just want to grow brine shrimp because you think it's awesome, get one tank for the brine shrimp and one tank for algae, and that way you can constantly feed algae into the brine shrimp tank. Um, and there's a lot of brine shrimp to go around. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please email them to uh, uh, service at algaeresearchsupply.com, or you can call us at 760, what do we got, 483-3626. Uh, uh, I have to get out of here. Um, all right, thank you guys so much for, for joining us today. Um, keep growing, keep making sure that uh, we, we get smarter about how we treat our ecosystem out there. So you guys have a wonderful night. Happy quarantining, everybody. Uh, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye now.